Okay, so I'm at International Gymnastics Camp, and I got a job there uh, working for the summer because they had this coaching program. They're like, all right, we're going to teach you how to coach. I didn't actually know it was a job. I thought I was just signing up to, I thought I was going to actually pay to be trained how to coach gymnastics, but it actually was just their employee training process, and they call it the Professional Coaching Diploma Program or something like that. And uh, so we're getting trained in all these different uh, coaching techniques and spotting and all this stuff. It's awesome. It's an awesome experience. It's like gymnastics, 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 wake up, go to sleep, do some more gymnastics, gymnastics, and it was just more gymnastics. Um, but there's this gentleman who's incredibly well known in the gymnastics industry. He's, he, he's like been, been to too many Olympics and he, he's the history books of, of uh, gymnastics essentially. Uh, I'm not going to drop his name right now. It's a mystery. But uh, he's just hanging out in the Olympic gym, as he always does. Um, I think that it was during coach workout. Pretty sure it was during coach workout. And I'm just doing a leg lift, just hanging on the bar, doing a leg lift. And you know, I'm, I'm thinking about like, man, why can't, I'm not, again, I'm not a gymnastics person, right? I'm j I just started coaching at, at basically the age of 14 and uh, everything's just self-taught and learned. And so this is like one of my first real gymnastics type of experiences and environments that's like full on gymnastics people, all college gymnasts, you know, elite level gymnasts, coaches for decades and generations and stuff like that. And I'm just like this nobody. Um, so I'm doing a leg lift on the bar. And, you know, my, my shins are touching the bar. It's like I can't even get my toes to come through the bar. My shins are touching the bar. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know. How, how do I get my shins, my feet to come through the bar like everyone else can? I'm like, oh, it must be flexibility. So I'm, I'm like thinking, okay, I got to stretch some more. And this gentleman just yells at me, right? Just yells at me. You're too weak. It's a strength problem. I just out of the blue. You're too weak, it's a strength problem. And I'm sitting there in my head going, what are you talking about? It's not, I'm not too weak, it's not a strength problem. I'm literally not flexible enough. I'm gonna let you sit on this for a second, okay? There's a guy who's been teaching, who's been in the gymnastics world, I don't know, I mean 40 plus years, probably longer, maybe 50, probably 60 years actually. Actually, I don't know, because he's probably was in his like, his 70s at the time. And I think he did his gymnastics his entire life. So it's like 70 years, let's just say. He's been in gymnastics. He's like the gymnastics history books, essentially. Uh, and he's been to multiple Olympics, whether it's him or as a coach or whatever it is. Um, and he's telling me the reason why I can't get my feet to pull through the bar is a strength problem and not a flexibility problem. And in my ignorance, I'm thinking, you have no idea what you're talking about because I'm not flexible enough to get my toes through the bar. Like I can barely even touch my own toes. I don't even have the flexibility to get my feet through the bar and he's saying it's strength. It took me, see I, um, probably took me four years, four years to actually understand what he was saying. And this is what I got wrong. And I don't know, maybe, maybe you already know this. Maybe you already know this, but I didn't. I did not know that flexibility is a strength problem. I didn't know that. I thought flexibility was a muscle relaxation problem. But then there's an irony in this word. Yeah, we can call it stretching. Yeah, we can call it mobility. It's called flexibility. We use the word flexibility. Your ability to flex. And then you have the antagonistic muscle, right? You got the other side. And so when you're flexing one side, the other side of your body automatically has to relax. So in order for me to close the angle between whatever joint is that I'm using, the antagonist has to relax so I can close the angle. Well, I can't close my hip angle enough. Okay, why can't I close my hip angle enough? Because I'm not strong enough to get my hips close enough to my, my thighs, essentially. And so you can say, well, Raleigh, you're not, you know, you're not, uh, your stretching is not where it needs to be. Your, your flexibility, your ability to relax your muscles is not where it needs to be. But it's actually my ability to contract my muscles does not demand my hamstrings and everything else to relax. It took me four years to figure that out. That the, the, the whole, it's like, it's like, I feel like it's like a, a Sherlock Holmes type of puzzle, you know, because the clue's right in front of your face. It's the word you're using, flexibility. And yet in our heads, you know, for years I was taught that flexibility is all about muscle relaxation. But the word itself is flexibility, not relaxability. No one walks around going, what's your relaxability? They say, what's your flexibility? And flex would be contract, right? And so 
So again, four years probably around there that I started changing how I do stretches. And so I started using strength training, not in the sense of just lifting weights, but in the idea of using my muscles to contract in order to relax the antagonist side. And that changed my mobility a thousand percent. And so uh, from this gentleman who's been in the gymnastics industry forever, shouts some random thing to a, a young kid, stranger who knows nothing about gymnastics, and he's <laughs> like, it's not, it's not your flexibility, it's your strength, uh, even though it is my ability to flex. Uh, and I blow it off thinking it's the craziest idea ever. Uh, he was totally right. And it took me four years to figure out that um, my ability to flex my muscles will dictate my mobility um, to move around my joints, essentially. So there you have it. There are some things to dive into. You go Google you know, how to use, and that's really what active stretching is essentially, right? It's like using your muscles to actually create the mobility. Uh, but it was kind of this cool, like when I, when I dawned on me, like you can only fire a muscle, right? You can only send an electrical impulse into your muscles to contract the muscle. You cannot send an electrical impulse into your muscles to tell the muscle to relax. It doesn't do that. You turn it off like a light switch. So the more I turn on one side of my body, the more I'm going to turn off the other side of my body. And the more I can close the angle of that gap, the more the other side has to turn off. And it's interesting to understand like how much electrical you know, stimuli is happening through our body, essentially, you could say, that's firing all these uh, muscle fibers at different rates and different times and, and different intensities. Uh, it's this weird, weird dance that's happening in our body that I, I didn't ever appreciate until I started chasing um, flexibility, uh, mobility through flexing my body. And so that was, that was pretty cool. So uh, I don't know how that helps you, but I just want to share that story with you is that there's a gentleman who 70 plus years probably gymnastics experience. Uh, and he tells me that I need, the reason why I can't get my feet to come through the bars because I'm not strong enough. And that um, really changed everything.